The Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity welcomes you to Five Minutes, Five Issues. Starting in five, four, three, two, one. Hello, I am Adam Dick, a Ron Paul Institute Senior Fellow. Let's start. Issue one. In a Truth Dig editorial last week titled, Is MSNBC Now the Most Dangerous Warmonger Network? Norman Solomon wrote about a fairness and accuracy in reporting report that found that in the second half of last year, TV station MSNBC both did not run a single segment devoted specifically to Yemen and ran nearly 5,000% more segments that mentioned Russia than segments that mentioned Yemen. MSNBC's routine, mainly negative Russia coverage is part of what Solomon calls continually piling up the dry tender of hostility toward Russia that boosts the odds of a cataclysmic blow-up between the world's two nuclear superpowers. Meanwhile, keeping quiet about the Yemen War's catastrophic consequences and major United States government involvement helps prevent Americans from demanding the U.S. involvement end. Issue 2 The Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies hosted on Tuesday foreign policy speeches by representatives Walter Jones, a Republican, and Ro Khanna, a Democrat, both members of the U.S. House of Representatives Armed Services Committee. Bipartisanship on foreign policy often comes down to advancing foreign intervention and war. But Jones and Khanna's presentations showed bipartisanship can advance peace. Comments by Jones, who is a member of the Ron Paul Institute Advisory Board, centered on the Afghanistan War while Khanna's comments centered on the Yemen war. Both representatives eloquently promoted foreign non-intervention and the importance of Congress debating and voting on whether the U.S. uses military force overseas. Issue 3 In the September 1, 2016 episode of 5 Minutes, 5 Issues, I talked about Christian Saussure's then-recent sentencing for taking pictures on a submarine he had worked on in the U.S. Navy. The pictures Stephen Nelson had reported at U.S. News & World Report were deemed confidential, the lowest level of classification. I contrasted Saussure's sentence with Federal Bureau of Investigation Director James B. Comey announcing there would be no prosecution of Hillary Clinton, despite Comey declaring she had been extremely careless in handling information with the highest classification levels. On Friday, President Donald Trump issued a pardon to Saussure whose case, Nelson notes in a new Washington Examiner article, Trump mentioned often during the presidential campaign, saying Saucier was ruined for doing nothing compared to Hillary Clinton. Saucier had finished his prison time when the pardon was announced, but still wore an ankle monitor. With the pardon, the monitor should be removed from Saucier's ankle, and the conviction removed from his record. Issue 4 There has been much suggestion since the 2016 mass murder at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida, that Omar Mateen was motivated by animus towards homosexuals. However, Glenn Greenwald and Murtaza Hussein wrote Monday at The Intercept that there is no apparent evidence to support this conclusion, including among new revelations arising from the trial of Mateen's wife related to the mass murder. Mateen's statements and internet posts, write Greenwald and Hussein, exclusively emphasized one cause, the ongoing killing of Muslim civilians by the U.S. Further, they note, none of his statements explaining his motives and cause for the attack make any reference to targeting the gay community or any judgments about homosexuality. In fact, Greenwald and Hussein declare there is no evidence he even knew that Pulse was a gay club when he targeted it. Mateen, who lived over 100 miles from Orlando, they write, also looked into other soft targets in the city that all had no particular connection to gay people. Issue 5 Consider being wrongfully imprisoned for 23 years for murder, and then upon your release due to your conviction being reversed, receiving no compensation. That, reported Dean Reynolds last week at CBS, is what happened to Lamont McIntyre, who was released from a Kansas prison in October. Kansas, notes Reynolds, is one of 18 states that offer wrongfully convicted prisoners no compensation at all upon their release. That's a wrap.
transcripts of 5 Minutes 5 Issues episodes, including links to related information, are at the Ron Paul Institute blog.